What's up, good people and eagle friends? <laughs> Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it's been a busy day. This this Tuesday, which is Players Day Off, there's a lot of stuff going on in the NFL. Um, I've been running around and out in out out of action. And I'm finding out that the Dallas Cowboys did make a signing. They finally signed Henry. No, no, no. Not not Derrick Henry. No, 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 no. K.J. Henry. K.J. Henry, a defensive end. Now, here's a good thing about getting a K.J. Henry, okay? Okay. That, K.J. Henry is young, okay? Typically, when you look at all the signings that the Cowboys have done, this um, season, we got traded for Jordan Phillips, who is in his 30s. Uh, we got Carl Lawson in his 30s. Um, you see the moves we've made typically have been older guys, you know, so they're experienced and so on, but they're also older guys. Football is a younger man's game, unless you're a quarterback. Although you could kind of say Aaron Rodgers, the oldest player in the NFL, kind of looking his age right now. Be that as it may. K.J. Henry was actually drafted in the fifth round last year by the Washington Commanders. They put the left hand up, and they drafted him. Now, last year, he did get some playing time, of course, with the Washington Commanders out of, North, excuse me, out of Clemson, uh, which, of course, is in North Carolina. Um, Clemson, and if we go to his stats from Clemson, um, we're talking about 13 sacks, two forced fumbles, um, 28 tackles for losses, uh, 61 assists, 63 solo tackles. So he had some experience there. Surprisingly, I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised that Washington didn't hold on to him because if we go to his numbers in Washington as a rookie, um, he ended up playing in 10 games, only played in 10 games. He started three, had two pass defenses, one and a half sacks, 19 combined tackles, but 14 of those were solo. Four tackles for a loss and two quarterback hits. Uh, of course, Dan Quinn came through and they ended up letting him go. He's not a Dan Quinn guy. He, of course, ended up bringing Dante Fowler and um, Dorrance Armstrong with him. So he became expendable. Um, KJ has been on the practice squad for Cincinnati and has played in two games, okay? Not a lot of playing time, uh, nothing as far as any numbers this year, but has played pretty good in places. Now, before people go ahead and poo-poo and say, oh, well, here we go again, Cowboys making mood for nobody. Well, let's put it this way at least, okay? A lot of people poo-pooed when we got David Irving. We got David Irving off of Kansas City's practice squad, and David Irving... Um, wasn't a lack of talent. It was not a lack of talent. Um, it was lack of having the desire to want to play because the guy had more talent and actually made some pretty good plays and had some pretty good games for us. If he had actually really focused in on wanting to be a football player, guy could have been incredible. Be that as it may, maybe this is a move without the head trauma, drama um, with KJ that could actually be beneficial. The Cowboys definitely think that there's something there because they signed him to a two-year deal. Typically, the Cowboys are looking to go ahead and get rid of you, but getting him for a two-year deal shows that they are definitely interesting in holding on to him. And here's the thing I will say. You know, we can all talk about and dream about saying, oh, let's go get Hassan Reddick. Okay, that's, that sounds good and everything and all that, but you're going to have to give him a new contract. Or you're going to be in the same spot the Jets are. But he hasn't had a practice all season. Hasn't had a hit since last year. If you sign a Hassan Reddick, they're not going to be ready to play anytime soon. Lord knows we've had Dalvin Cook here for the last, what, five weeks? And, of course, Jerry says he's still not ready. Um, at least K.J. Henry has been on the practice squad and been on the team and at least is in football shape, and now it's a matter of getting him up to speed. Now, here's the reality right now. You're not going to bring somebody off the street and expect them to know 
your system plug and play. This isn't fantasy football where I can go ahead and just say, I'm going to bench Dak Prescott this week, and I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Jalen Hurts. <laughs> That'll never happen. Oh, I'm sorry. But you understand what I'm saying and figure, you know, it uh, doesn't matter what system that you're in. We'll, we'll just, no, it doesn't work that way in actual football. So this is deemed a good move. This is a move that um, is a player that you probably coach up and end up making him into somebody. This could be somebody who could be like a Dorrance Armstrong down the road. Um, the Cowboys have been pretty good at finding bottom tier free agents, practice squad guys, guys from the USFL, and so on, and making players out of them. So hats off to them for at least doing that. Now, around the NFL, this is right now, it seems like a lot of dissension with a lot of big name players because Devontae Adams apparently has requested a trade from the Raiders. Devontae Adams has requested a trade from the Raiders. Now, the Cowboys and the Raiders have been friendly in the past. We did trade for Amari Cooper from the Raiders. Uh, Rolando Blackman, um, we got from the Raiders as well as some other guys. So you could look at this and say, maybe the Cowboys uh, get a phone call from the Raiders and say, we'd like to move on from it. Now, the bigger question would be is, um, would Stephen Jones take the call? <laughs> well, Jerry, you said you're all in. Jerry, you've said that, you know, you're the GM and you're the one who could fix this shit. If you could make off a move like that, that's the kind of move that would help your running game because you're going to get a whole lot more people with the way the Cowboys offense is working um, in the passing game. You're going to end up having to get more coverage on Adams and C.D. Lamb, and that's going to open up the running game and make you one hell of an offense. But we're the Cowboys, and we don't do those things. Uh, one other final note here that um, I'm enjoying. Philly 500 has just had a, a live stream, and Philly looks sad. He looks sad. But then again, I guess only winning three times out of your last 11 games might do that. And uh, knowing that tomorrow will be his walk of shame, along with Dan Salio. And you know what? I'm showing no mercy. No mercy. I'm getting all my ammunition together from big play slay <laughs> Ooh, to, I, I got to come up with a new nickname. You got played by slay with him on Micah Parsons, literally laughing at his team losing um, and so on and throwing his players under the bus, even though he's wearing captain C on his Jersey to Jalen hurts, you know, kind of throwing Nick Sirianni under the bus to people literally saying, Fire Nick Sirianni for Kellen Moore. Um, and now, Mozzie Smith's stats are identical to Jalen Carter's. So, yes, I am getting all my ammunition together for tomorrow. And, you know, I don't know if a half an hour show is going to be long enough for me to trash the Eagles. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate y'all. Peace out.